to maintain the quality of construction we need to use good quality of materials even though the quality of materials are good once the construction is completed we may experience some of the structural defects hey friends welcome back to civil engineering mastery in this video we are going to discuss about one of the major structural defect that is structural cracks due to differential settlement in foundation as we know foundation is one of the major structural element because all the loads above the ground will be transferred to the foundation so if any settlement in foundation will create a major structural crack that needs to be addressed before any severe damage to the structure so in this video let's discuss in detail about what is settlement what are all the types of settlements we have in foundation and what are all the causes of this differential settlement and how we can prevent this differential settlement and what are all the remedies we have to safeguard the structure from this differential settlement so without further delay let's begin now first thing first let's start with what is settlement when you take a structure all the loads of the structure will be transferring to the footing or foundation of that structure so the foundation has to resist the load which is coming on it if the foundation is not capable to resist the load the structure tend to sink inside the soil so the vertical movement of the structure is called settlement loading is not only the factor there are other factors as well which causes the settlement like soil properties water seepage under the foundation so there are many factors available to cause the settlement in foundation the settlement can be equal all along the building or differential where one part of the building settles more when compared to the other part so this equal settlement does not create much problem if it is not exceeding the limit so we have equal settlement and unequal settlement that is differential settlement as you can see here the differential settlement you can get in this way this part of the building settles less and this part of the building settles more now it can be clearly visible when compared to this part this part is settles more and that create the tilting of the structure and even structural cracks so this is called differential settlement unlike equal settlement differential settlement cause severe structural damages so this needs to be addressed properly let's move on how to identify settlement cracks cracks in the foundation walls or floors Second one is cracks on the structure at an angle of 45 degree around openings, doors and windows. Next one is uneven floors and then water seepage into basement, sagging or leaning walls. These are all the factors which help us to identify the settlement cracks. Once we identify it, we can start some remedies to rectify these settlement cracks. Next, let's look into the causes of differential settlement. First one is different types of soil. we have different types of soil and also the soils have different compressibility properties so if the different types of soils are present beneath a foundation then they will settle at different rates because the soil properties under the foundations are different for example clay soils tend to be more compressible than sand soil so a foundation on clay soil will likely to settle more than the foundation on sand And the next factor is changes in groundwater level if the groundwater level under foundation changes the soil will compress or swell so this can cause a differential settlement especially when the foundation is not designed to accommodate these changes next factor is different moisture contents soil that are too dry or too wet will settle more than the soils that are at moderate moisture level this is because dry soil shrink when it absorbs moisture whereas the wet soil swells when it dries out the next factor is improper foundation design or construction if the foundation is not designed or constructed properly it may not be able to support the load of the building because all the loads will be transferred to the foundation if the foundation is not able to support the load which can lead to differential settlement The last factor is lateral loads. These loads are caused by wind or earthquakes. Also cause differential settlement. This is because lateral loads can cause the soil beneath the foundation move sideways which can lead to uneven settlement. In addition to this we have other causes of differential settlement such as poor compaction trees with large roots excavation near the structure piping leaks 
and vibration of soil. Next, let's look into how we can prevent this differential settlement. The first step is proper soil investigation. Next one is designing the foundation properly and then using a rigid foundation. And last one is monitoring the settlement. So the first step in preventing the differential settlement is to conduct through a soil investigation to determine the type of soil and its bearing capacity. So this will help to identify any potential problem that could lead to differential settlement. And next designing the foundation properly. So the foundation should be designed to distribute the load of the structure evenly over the underlying soil. This will help to prevent one part of the foundation from settling more than the other. So if you design the foundation properly, you can minimize the chances of getting the differential settlement. Next one is rigid foundation. Rigid foundation such as rock foundation can help to prevent differential settlement by providing a uniform bearing surface for the structure. So raft foundation and mat foundation can help to prevent the differential settlement. And finally, we need to monitor the settlement. So this is very important to monitor the settlement of foundation over time to ensure that it is not settling unevenly. If any problems are detected, they can be addressed before they cause damage to the structure. Next, let's look into the remediations for differential settlement. First one is concrete underpinning and then jet grouting, micro piles and using geopolymers. Underpinning involves rising the settled portion of the foundation to the same level as the rest of the foundation. This can be done by drilling holes under the foundation and injecting concrete or grout. Jet grouting involves injecting a mixture of water and cement under high pressure into the ground. This creates a column of compacted soil that can support the weight of the structure. Micro piles are small slender piles that are driven into the ground that can be used to transfer the load of the structure to more stable soil. And then geopolymer materials. These materials can be used to improve the stability of the soil. They can be used to reinforce the foundation or to create a barrier between different layers of soil. So all of these methods are the remediation for differential settlement. The most familiar example of differential settlement is the Leaning Tower of Pisa. It took two centuries to build due to the problems with differential settlement and inclination. The Leaning Tower of Pisa is built on wetlands with the geological profile of the soil consisting of clay and fine sand and it was having the high level of groundwater. The conditions for the construction of a tall structure have been challenging since the very beginning. If you look into the geological profiles, it is having sand and clay soil. So that is the main cause of this differential settlement of this Leaning Tower of Pisa. So friends, I hope you all like this video. Please do comment in the comment box. Hit the like button if you really like the content and also don't forget to subscribe this channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.